Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben, you here for another Legacy video. Uh, just as a heads up, I have a minor finger injury. Uh, I'm gonna try to record using different fingers on the mouse and kind of see how that goes. All right, so Sean D originally donated to see something rather spicy. They wanted to see a Minsk and Boo hamster, ham I, I can't do air quotes with this finger, hamster hops video. Uh, where we uh, threw Minsk and Boo, which is a planeswalker that makes hamsters, into the Yokel Hops shell. Unfortunately, that card never made it to Magic Online, so we're going to go with their backup plan. Um, the idea for this goes back many years to, I believe, a Jeff Hoagland video, where he played an Ad Nauseum Dark Depths deck. The idea was, and we'll do the Dark Depths combo in a second, but the idea was that when the Dark Depths combo didn't work, you could add Nauseam and draw your entire deck because the entire CMC of the deck is less than 20, your starting life total. And that once you cast the Ad Nauseam, you use your artifact mana to cast a Cunning Wish, which gets you Lightning Storm. And let's pull that one fully on screen here. So Lightning Storm deals X damage to any target where X is 3 plus the number of charge counters on Lightning Storm. And you can discard a land card to put two charge counters on Lightning Storm. And you can choose a new target for it. The idea is that like Lightning Storm is this ever-increasing game where you and your opponent discard a bunch of lands to eventually throw a lethal Lightning Storm at someone. So, our plan is normally to assemble a Dark Depths and either Thespian Stage, which can copy the Dark Depths, and since the copy has no ice counters, you get to immediately sacrifice it and create a 2020. Or we use Vampire Hex Mage to rip the counters off a Dark Depths and produce our 2020 in that way. So that's plan A. Plan B is draw the entire deck and ad nauseum. We have a lot of lands in this deck list. Uh, there's a couple more in this column. Uh, and the Ottawaras ended up over here. Uh, Ottawara, go back with the other lands. So, like, we have a lot of lands in this deck list. Um, a couple of them are a little bit questionable. Uh, Peat Bog is a way to get turn two mana for Vampire Hex Mage. You can just go Peat Bog on one, Dark Depths on two, Vampire Hex Mage, do it. And that works similarly to Urborg, where it just gives you another way to turn two Goldfish, make your Merit Lodge, which is really cool. But then we also have some things like Profane Tutor here which is essentially a demonic tutor that has suspend too, and notably for our deck, a CMC, or sorry, we're calling it mana value now, a mana value of zero. So we can use the profane tutor to assemble our pieces of the dark depths combo, or we can use it to find our ad nauseum when we're ready to attempt to draw our whole deck. And as always, like Urza Saga, the glue, the rock that holds together some questionable ideas, we have a lot of artifact mana in this deck, so we can also just try to run away uh, some games with Urza Saga. Um, I'm going to be playing the games in the tournament practice room today because I think I'm going to have to make some changes to the deck list, but I have no idea what those changes are without playing some of this. Um, I made a handful of changes from the original deck list that Sean sent me. Um, so for example, Sean originally thought three Vampire Hex Mage was a good idea to reduce the general cost of your deck for Ad Nauseum. But I think, I think you just have to play four of this to just increase the number of times that you turn to Goldfish and make the Merit Lodge. I'm very unsure about being able to consistently get blue-blue for Teleria West. Um, like, there aren't that many blue sources in the deck. Um, the artifact mana helps out with that a lot. But I may find after a game or two that, like, Teleria West just needs to be another blue-black dual land of some kind. And then I'm a little unsure about the sideboard. Most of the sideboard is a robust Cunning Wish package, giving you some protection for your Merit Lodge with a card like Not of This World, or otherwise giving you some interaction. Um, a very cute thing that's here is Sudden Substitution combo. The idea being you go and you cast something like a Pact of Negation, countering a spell, but... Then you give the Pact of Negation to your opponent so that they have to pay for the Pact. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting idea. I don't know that we're ever going to pull that off, and I don't know that that's worth the sideboard slots, but, like, it's there. 
might as well attempt it. Um, so I expect we're going to have to make some changes to this and that this won't be the ending deck list, but uh, let's see how this goes. Uh, if you're new here and this is your first time watching one of these videos, if you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. That's the easiest way to support my content for free. Let's battle. Uh, this hand goes fast, right? So this is just Petal Petal, Dark Depths, Thespian Stage, turn 2, Merit Lodge. Uh, this is absolutely a keep. And we'll see what my opponent does. I think I play Thespian Stage on 1. What you got, opponent? Okay, opponent is playing an artifact-based deck of some kind. Probably some sort of, like, Emery, Psy, Kappa, Cannoneer sort of deck. Yes, uh, absolutely confirmed. Hmm. I wonder if I should have played out my Lotus Petals to play around Chalice on Zero. That's, that's like, a very niche thing to do. It matters sometimes. I don't know. Like, if my opponent Chalice on Zero, that might end up being actively good for me. All right, draw your card. All right. Battle. Battle. My opponent's only out is going to be a two of Ottawara or otherwise Baking Thopters. I'm just going to uh, do the thing right now. Despian Stage. Okay, that, that is good enough for the concession. Uh, very nice. Engineer Explosives is like legit good to sweep my opponent's artifact mana off the table here. I think I'm good with those. Do I want more Pithing Needle? Hunting Wish for Hercules Recall is dirty. Hmm. I don't. I don't know. Uh, actually, Engineered Explosives helps me get through Thopter tokens. Yeah, I do absolutely need those. I wonder if I need the Ad Nauseums here. I guess there's one. Pretty low cost to keep it. Maybe some packs go out. Side sideboarding is going to be a little fast and loose while I kind of figure out how this deck is going to work and play. All right. Turn one Urza Saga, Mox Diamond, Discarding Peat Bog, Lion's Eye Diamond, Pithing Needle. It's a different sort of game. It feels like it's still a keep. And we'll see where my opponent goes with their turn. Uh, fuck. Well, well, well. That, uh... That's a blow to them, but it... Also really stings for me. I needed... I can play this for a colorless mana, right? And then just sweep the Chalice of the Void off the table? Ah. Uh, that's sort of neat. I don't think I've ever done that before. Alright. Engineered Explosives, its mana value is, act is 1, so it doesn't get countered by Chalice despite being a 0 drop. That's a, that's a cool one, folks. I'm really happy to see that. Okay, there's a spell bomb. Okay, there's an Ottawara played out. Very happy with uh, those leaving play. Okay, and is that just targeting Shadow Spear? Yeah, that's just targeting Shadow Spear. That's fine. My own chalice. Uh, so this this turn is gonna get weird. So this is probably Urborg. Crack this to destroy that chalice. Use this window to play my own zero drops. Yeah, get rid of Peat Bog there. Play LED out. Play Pithing Needle. I think just stopping the Emery. Although, I don't know. There's a world where I just stop the Spell Bomb and then just try to assemble my combo somehow later. Now, let's, let's stop the Emery. And I think I will awkwardly play Chalice of the Void again. Despite, like... Spending the energy to get rid of a Chalice of the Void. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to... Eh. Getting rid of Aether Spellbomb is so good too, though. Because, like, I'm about to make a Construct token and then I'm a Merit Lodge deck. I don't know. Oh, okay, that's just... Put my opponent in a weird enough spot where they're willing to concede. That's fine. Okay. Um, I have stage depths and enough mana to kind of do my thing here. Um, I will. I will keep this hand. It is a slow hand, but, like, I have the ability to produce a Merit Lodge with this hand. I think I'm just going to call that good enough. I think I'm going to play the Depths here. Because that means if I spike Vampire Hex Mage, I can just make my creature on turn two. It's a little awkward for me if I just get, like, Snap Wastelanded. Okay, no play from my opponent. Uh, Mox Opal doesn't do a lot right now. 
think I will go ahead and suspend a profane tutor here. We'll get that going. I'll have an Urza Saga backdoor if plan A doesn't work out super well for me. All right, what do you got, opponent? It is a brainstorm, sure. I wonder if I'm supposed to use a turn to Cunning Wish for Not of This World. Seems like that solves a lot of problems in regards to things like Swords to Plowshares. I'm going to check this, right? That's counter unless you pay seven. Yeah. Um, no shuffle, notably, for my opponent. Profane Tutor ticks down. I think I'm going to take a turn to Cunning Wish. It, like, I'm, I'm not currently under pressure. So I'm fine with forcing the action. I also just get like a profane tutor on my turn. Unless my opponent like randomly plays a Teferi or something. No shuffle with the ponder. Let's see if we can prompt some action here. Okay, it resolved. I I will pick not of this world. Alright, now profane tutor goes off. And we'll see if my opponent wants to counter it. Alright, cast. That is a force of negation. Okay. I mean, it's not countering my knot of this world then, right? Like, I care about that. Let's play a Thespian stage. I probably don't need this extra mana, but I really don't want to be wrong. One short of being able to transmute for a pact. All right. What do you got for me, opponent? Okay, a Volcanic Island. Opponent is absolutely on the multicolor plan. Ooh, that's a that's a blocker. Interesting that Oh, Savannah as well. Um interesting opponent is going like this direction, but is like opting not to be playing a Yorian deck. Okay. So that doesn't actually eternalize that. That doesn't make white mana. I I, I think I'm just ready to try. I just have a Dark Depths or sorry, I just have an Urza Saga backup plan if this doesn't work out favorably for me. Keep the one with no counters. I've got a 2020. There's an ad nauseum as well. I think this is the point where I tr go ahead and just like transmute for a pact. That seems fine. Right. There's a pact. Play out an Urza Saga. I don't have a reason to play out Mox Opal. Okay, that was that was good enough. Uh, opponent almost certainly had some interaction. Um, I do wonder if I randomly, like, beat an Endurance because my opponent didn't respond to tran me transmuting Teleria West. We are playing against Blue Pile. I don't know that I'm going to sideboard. I'm going to keep Pithing Needle in the main deck in case I have to play around, like, Caracas or Wasteland or something, but I, I don't think I'm going to make any changes here. Ad Nauseam, like, part of the deck aside, the Profane Tutor side is feeling pretty good. Like, I, I just felt like I had so much flexibility in how I chose to play this game. Like, I got to wait and not just YOLO because of the combination of Profane Tutor and Cunning Wish. And, like, I could have even played more patiently than I did. Okay, my hand is kind of whatever in many ways. Like, I have an Ad Nauseum, or I guess THE Ad Nauseum. I have an Urza Saga. I have a Chalice that I can play. Like... I think this is a keep. It is a weird combination of cards that, like, don't exactly do anything that feels fine. Like, dissolving a Chalice of the Void forces resources from my opponent, and I can just try to, like, play patiently and then do something like, oh, end of your turn, ad nauseum, my turn, make Merit Lodge, or something like that. I don't know, I'm probably never going to make a Sorcery Speed Merit Lodge if I can help it. Alright, uh, that is a shuffle off that Ponder. I think I'll just be leading on Underground C and passing here. Okay, there's there's white mana from my opponent, or I guess it can be mana of many colors. Ooh, Teleria West, that's actually quite good. So, let's play a Chalice. And this is kind of the first thing that I'm putting my opponent to the test of. Deck has such an odd combination of cards. Okay, it was good enough to get a Force and an Expressive Iteration, which I'm very happy about. Ooh. Don't like that. Transmute is Sorcery Speed. Yeah. I'm still good with it. Let's let's take a little look-see. Holy shit, I have so many options. I think I'm still supposed to just get the Dark Depths. 
I just get a new chalice, though. Get a new chalice. Like, I'm not in a hurry to win this game with my opponent having Wasteland here. Like, I can, I can force my opponent into a weird spot. And if they ever just tap that Wasteland, I am threatening producing Merit Lodge. Which they, in turn, can be threatening Sorcery Speed Removal, so, like, there's that. Um, long term, I'm really looking to pithing needle that Wasteland and then go off. There are also worlds where I can just, like, Thespian Stage copy Urza Saga. Alright. Yeah, I think I'm good with this. Let's attempt a Chalice of the Void for X equals 1. Oh, opponent is saying no again. Pitching Ponder. And I'll chill here. Yeah, what, what I'm doing right now feels very good. Like, despite the fact that I am obviously not the control deck, I feel like I am dictating where this game is going and how it's playing out. All right, what you got for me? You've got mana now. Uh, Uro, I don't really care about that. I think I do. I have a surgical extraction. Wouldn't surprise me if I have a surgical extraction. Oh, okay, that's fine. Opponent's got to pull the trigger on that now if they want to do it. All right, view sideboard. I do not have a surgical extraction. One mana short of just casting an ad nauseum. Surgical extraction should probably be in the sideboard of this. I'm going to make that change in between rounds. All right. I'm going to play out a Thespian Stage. I can't play Hex Mage. I'm going to Thespian Stage copy Underground C in this turn cycle, I think. I can cast an Ad Nauseum after that. Ooh, okay. So opponent does not have the mana necessary to play Uro. All right. Copy an Underground C. Yeah. So I think this is an end of my opponent's turn ad nauseum. Not 100% sure. Okay. Uh, blue, blue, green, green. I think I cast ad nauseum with Uro on the stack. Here we go. Here is my ad nauseum attempt. Opponent needs... Uh, yeah, I want to repeat this. Let's go. Alright. We're, we're drawing the deck. Okay, I, when I say I'm drawing the deck, what I really mean is I need to leave a card or two in there um, so that I don't die to drawing for turn. Uh, I've got a Cunning Wish and a bunch of mana. This should be fine. All right, and we'll we'll see if we can actually get the kill after drawing our deck. All right, Uro trigger happens. Wow, I'm, I'm still at 10 life after all that. All right, Uro. Did you draw my opponent a counterspell? is the, uh, the, the the question of the day here. All right. I'm going to play some cards. I'm going to play a lot of cards. I also just have, like, multiple Pact of Negations to protect this. So this should, in theory, be fine. Cast a Mox Diamond. Start a land. Cast a bunch more Artifact Mana. Mox Opal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Make a red here, I guess. Ask this. Keep this one. Make a red here. Make some land drop. It doesn't really matter what. Play a Dark Depths. I haven't actually done the math of how many lands are in my hands. This should be fine, though. Uh, where's a Cunning Wish? Alright. Let's make some... Oh. Oh, should I... Don't have an Urborg in play. Okay, the land drop did matter. Alright. Here is a Hunting Wish. Yes, I will use this ability. I will grab a Lightning Storm. I will cast a Lightning Storm targeting you. I have to hold priority for that. <sighs> cool. Love, uh... Love the Magic Online interface for that. That doesn't actually give you an opportunity to uh, cast anything. Uh, that's fine. I guess I will discard Infinity Cards and attack my opponent for a Merit Lodge or 21. That doesn't do it. They get an Uro attack. All right. Okay. This is a... Uh, like, that. That's that's a win on my end. Um, Like, just in terms of, like, 
I could not lose from that position with multiple pack negations backing it up. That's just like I didn't know how my card worked on Magic Online. We'll play another round here. That's fine. Okay. Um, just make a turn one chalice and chill after that. I guess that's fine. Uh, actually, that um, no, I should have mulliganed this because like I have to play Urza Saga out if I want to do that. Um, this will be tapped Talaria West then, I think. Yeah, and I don't think I want to blow, like, three cards on doing a turn one Chalice for one. Like, when I have an Urza Saga in the not-too-distant future. No shuffle on the Ponder. I will play an Urza Saga here. And attempt to slam the Chalice of the Void on one. Okay, it worked. It doesn't mean it's going to stick around, but it worked. Like, oppon opponent is a prismatic ending sort of deck, so, like, I don't really expect Chalice to be around forever. Alright, opponent has grabbed Savannah. Okay, yeah, there is a prismatic ending, taking that card out of the way. That's fine. Another Chalice of the Void. Alright, what are, what are my feelings? Should I just play Chalice of the Void, or should I start making Urza Saga Construct tokens? I think one Urza Saga token backed by Chalice of the Void is better than two Urza Saga tokens not backed by Chalice. Okay, it has stuck. Um, at which point I'm going to play out my Lotus Petals so that I can get guaranteed um, Urza Saga token value in my upkeep. Um, it makes me a little worse versus Meltdown. My opponent happens to be playing that. Okay, uh, looks like we're just getting a land drop. Uh, no, we're gonna we're gonna play it cool. We're gonna play it cool. I'll go ahead and make my token. I can get a Mox here, Mox Opal specifically. Oh man, uh, I can I can get Mox Opal and attempt to make Merit Lodge in this turn cycle. I can also just Pithing Needle that Flooded Strand. But I think I like this play. It's it's just, like, a disgusting amount of pressure. Because, like, the Construct token is a little scary. The Dark Depths token is a little scary. Chalice of the Void severely limiting my opponent's options to deal with Merit Lodge if I make it end of turn. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, are you, are you going to just make Timeless Dragon as a blocker for my Merit Lodge? It's fine if that's the case. It will mean that my opponent can have a chance to block and then, like, play Prismatic Ending or something to answer Merit Lodge. I think I'm just good with that. Alright, end of turn. Target my Dark Depths. Make my copy. Which produces Merit Lodge. Does put me further away from other things. And I'll crash in with both of these because the Merit Lodge has to be blocked or my opponent dies. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be in the situation where I can uh, act of negation, whatever answer my opponent plays to this Merit Lodge, if they do have one. There's like Teferi Jace, Prismatic Ending, and I guess some weirder stuff. All right. Five. <laughs> another Timeless Dragon. All right, so they just get to buy another turn. Um, that's fine. Do I want to Mox to increase this to a 4-4, four four, or do I want... To get closer to actually paying for Pact of Negation. I think I want to make this a 4-4. Four, four. I don't know, like, there's also just, like, Ad Nauseum coming. JK, I, I lied. Send them sideways. When it gets to block, yeah. Play Peat Bog. Pass the turn, be one mana away from Ad Nauseum. Ooh, Mystic Sanctuary gets to put Prismatic Ending on top. That is very good. An opponent can Eternalize, uh... Timeless Dragon, in order to buy that turn, uh, which is what we are seeing. Okay, I think I win a lot of different ways here. One, two, three, four. This is the fifth mana. I can do this with Mox Diamond, though, so I can still make a land drop later. Um, so let's do this. Junk Underground C. One, two, three, four, five. I will add Nauseam my entire deck. I will Pact that. This is absolutely the end of the game. Okay, or not. Alright. 
opponent had two pitch counters there. And I'll crash in with both of these. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's fine. The opponent did counter my Pact of Negation. Could have countered my Ad Nauseum instead and made me pay for it. Uh, which leaves them in a slightly better position. Um, they also might just die to this token, though. Like, they have one card left. Uh, Hex Mage is cool. Uh, let's crash in and see where this puts my opponent. Alright, they took it. I, I will cast this just so that I have another lethal body here. Uh, this will make me worse against Supreme Verdict specifically, but better against any other single target removal situation. Okay, and we get the concession here, and we get a win. So I I, I won three matches in this round. Uh, air, air quotes on the one, though. Okay, as promised, I've made... Why is this so big? You, you scoot over. You scoot over here to where you belong. Okay, uh, anyway, as promised, I made a small change. I swapped Sudden Substitution for Surgical Extraction. Um, looking at the opening hand here, it's not overly exciting on its own. It has a lot of play to it. It's slow play. Maybe I still keep it. Like, I'm I'm not sure how exactly to evaluate some of these opening hands. Oh, are we playing against Burn or are we playing against a Red Prison? Oh, yeah, we're straight up playing against Burn. Okay. I am so likely to get fed extra lands here. Uh, Mox Diamond is kind of like an extra land. Uh... Yeah, I like this a lot for me. Alright, so let's go Mox Diamond discarding the comes into play tapped Peat Bog here. I can play a Mox Opal. I think I can just win this game with Urza Saga. So play Urza Saga. I don't believe this deck is working. Like, th th this deck is pretty legit. Like, I am doing very powerful things very consistently here. So, like, here's a turn one Chalice of the Void with Urza Saga activations. Uh, yeah. And, to like, two tutors in my hand for if I need to end up using my mana on anything, which I don't think I do. I think this is just, like, Saga Token, Saga Token, Shadow Spear win. And I just shut off some number of my opponent's cards. This deck's really fun. Sean, thank you for donating for this one, by the way. Like, we're, we're, we're doing some work on it. We need to patch it up a little, but, like, this strategy is super legit. Another Chalice of the Void. Um, yeah. Urza Saga token. Urza Saga token. I play this land so that I can potentially Shadow Spear next turn. Or Shadow Spear equip next turn, rather. Makes me a little worse versus Price of Progress. Opponent said Chalice on 1, Chalice on 2, GG. No, I don't, I don't think Chalice on 2 is right here. Like, you might have conceded to it. But I don't think it's right. I probably still make this token anyway, right? One, two, three, four. The Peat Bog. Yeah, I think with a Chalice in play already, this is fine to do. And like, if opponent expends resources on this token, I think that ends well for me. Okay, yeah. Uh, that drawing that land, I think, is the GG point where my opponent like l literally cannot come back into the game anymore. All right, so it's a 5-5. Five, five. Search up Shadow Spear. Land drop. Shadow Spear. Equip. And this just puts me back to 20 life. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, the Ad Nauseam portion of the deck is going to be significantly worse against Burn. Like, I, I want to be doing the Urza Saga or Dark Depths thing. Like, I think this comes out, and then I think I play some random blue counter spells. Like, Pact of Negation is a bit of a tough sell here. Like, Luster Storm's legit. An offer you can't refuse is uh, maybe a little questionable, but I'd probably play it. And then I could consider playing, like, some EEs or something. Um, do I want the main deck Pithing Needle? It's just an artifact to increase my artifact count. What would I cunning wish for in this matchup? Literal, literally nothing? Uh, maybe literally nothing. Yeah, let's let's play some EEs as removal. Slaughter, I, I can just pay for Slaughter Pact. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Two, 
Now, I'm just going to play, like, Pithing Needle and Tormod's Crypt as, like, legit artifacts. I don't know. Like, may maybe some portion of the time I do get to, like, 5 mana impact of uh, negation is, like, re a reasonable card. Uh, this hand does nothing. Like, it has 3 mana very quickly, but I don't think this is better than other things I can do. Uh, yeah, this makes a uh, Merit Lodge on turn 2. Uh, keep. Get rid of EE. Alright, opponent also mulligan to 5. Uh, not where they want to be. And, uh, we'll see if they feed me a land. They have fed me a Chalice of the Void. Disgusting. Yeah, this this is fine to do. So let's Mox Diamond, discard Urborg. Alright, Junk the Urborg. Play Thespian Stage. Play Chalice on 1. And we are going to go ahead and play out the Lotus Petal right now so that I can hold up Flusterstorm. And we have the one two mana to activate Thespian Stage plus Dark Depths. Uh, we won't have Flusterstorm backup necessarily. Uh, that's fine. I can absolutely take this Goblin Guide hit without worrying about it. And I can't really think of anything that like the Mono Red deck can do to beat the Merit Lodge once it's in play. Um, minus outright killing me. Or ensnaring bridge, I guess. Alright. Espion stage. Target Dark Depths. Produce a Merit Lodge. Keep the one with no counters. I think I do take two to play Mox Opal to have Flusterstorm up. On the off chance that my opponent has something wild. Alright, good stuff. Yeah, minus some, mi like, minor edits of, like, that Surgical Extraction that the deck needed. Like, this deck might have been League-ready at the beginning of the video, which I really didn't expect. Mass to Smithereens, targeting the Chalice. I don't think that matters with my opponent's life total where they are at. I'll flow to blue mana. Actually, I guess Flusterstorm just saves me life, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's 2 damage versus 3 damage. Yeah, so the Chalice of the Void counters the original Flusterstorm. But then the Flusterstorm copy resolves countering Smash to Smithereens. Okay, and that was good enough to get the concession. Uh, yeah, this that this deck is surprisingly good. Okay, um, what are we looking at with this one? I can produce a turn one Chalice of the Void if that matters, and try to play an Urza Saga game until I don't. Fine. Like, I have ooh. Okay. So, I now want to play an Urza Saga beatdown game versus whatever it is my opponent is doing. I feel pretty confident about that. I'm going to play Mox Opal and Lotus Petal. I think I will then Chalice of the Void on zero in case my opponent is playing a Psy sort of deck. This also turns on... Metalcraft for me, which is relevant. I can't play this Pithing Needle out because of my opposing Chalice of the Void. I think I'm good with that. My Ad Nauseum based lines have gotten worse. My Urza Saga lines like are very good. Hey, hey. On it is a Psy deck. We'll see what sort of uh, chump block shenanigans they can do. But um, this Chalice of the Void is going to be good. Like, I have cut my opponent off a mana, a card, and like two pieces towards Metalcraft. Hunting Wish Hercules Recall is uh, also a thing that I can do at some point in this game. I don't think I'm interested in that as of right now. Like, my plan right now is just trample. Like, make two Urza Saga tokens, trample over uh, Thopter, Chump Blockers, and hope my opponent doesn't get a large Kappa Cannoneer or something like that into play. Active Negation may become a reasonable real magic card in the not-too-distant future as well. Opponent also played out one Ottawara already, uh, which is nice for me. Yeah, just one Thopter swinging in, that's fine. Opponent uh, intending on playing like Sword and Shield with them, like attack with one, block with one, and try to cast an artifact to replace the one that was lost in combat. This is a 4 4, which is about to be a 5 5. 5 5. And I'm going to look, but I believe this is just getting Shadow Spear. It is. 
now play Urborg. This thing is going to lose one due to me losing the Lotus Petal, but I think that's fine because I, I get it back immediately. And this gives me Trample. Uh, position looks good. Uh, it can change very quickly, but position looks good. I also just have Cunning Wish for Hercules Recall for, like, if my opponent does do something cool. Nice. Um, Engineered Explosives is going to be sick. I absolutely want to board those in. I absolutely want Pithing Needle in. I think I want to have as many effective copies of this as possible, so I'll leave it in the sideboard. But this is... Like, my opponent has enough creatures that pressure my life total relatively well that I probably board out the Ad Nauseam here. I can still wish for it if I want to draw my deck. If I do that, I probably don't need the Lion's Eye Diamond. And I can probably go down, down on Pact of Negation if I'm not trying to draw my entire deck. Slaughter Pact, also not crazy. Slaughter Pact might be better than Pact of Negation. Or, or wait, or is this non-artifact? No, it is non-black. Yeah, that's fine. You have to play, like, the terror game with the old cards. Like, is it non-black, or is it non-black or artifact creature? I will produce a Merit Lodge. Maybe on turn one. If I draw a zero-cost artifact, I produce Merit Lodge on turn one. And just, like, say, like, where's your Ottawara, fool? Alright, opponent just leading on Urza Saga. That's totally fine. Retrofitter Foundry is annoying, but probably too slow here. Opponent probably has an Ancient Tomb in hand, if I were to guess. Play Mox Diamond, discarding Peat Bog. That card doesn't matter. And then... I can play a Vampire Hex Mage this turn. I can pull the counters off Urza Saga if I want. I don't think I need to do that. Yeah. Let's just try to resolve one of these this turn, though. Because then I can resolve one both this turn and next turn. Nice! Itching Kappa Cannoneer. Super happy about that. I guess there are worlds where I want to think about playing Mox Opal in case my opponent plays a Chalice on Zero. Yeah, there's the Ancient Tomb read that I had. So now I am going to get to produce Merit Lodge no matter what. Because my opponent can't have Force of Will. Plus card to pitch to it. Alright. Here is a Mox Opal. There is a Chalice on Zero to annoy my opponent. There is a Dark Depths. Here is a Vampire Hex Mage. And now, opponent has some choices to make. They probably need to make a creature with Retrofitter Foundry, so that next turn, they... Okay, they're, they're going for the Construct. I don't think that's correct. I think you're supposed to make a creature so that you can make a Chump Blocker, because I'm going to play around the Pithing Needle. So, let's make my Merit Lodge. Here we go. All the counters are gone. So now opponent needs a little bit too much mana to do all the things they need to do in one turn. They can get a Shadow Spear, attack with their Construct token, and live another turn. Or I guess they can get Aether Spellbomb and have a Blue Source in hand. Oh! Fuck. Yeah, they had it. Okay, so you, you should attack here and then just like pull the Merit Lodge into Oblivion. Uh, Or not. Opponent absolutely should not let me untap, because I get Cunning Wish into Not of This World as an out. Not that they could possibly know that, but it's a thing. Yeah, okay. They they figured it out. Uh, but they missed all, they missed five points of damage. I don't think it matters, because I think they just kill me in two turns now. I guess I'll put this on, like, one. You know, I don't think it matters here. Like, my opponent just, like, makes a Construct, attacks in for 12... And I don't really beat that. Uh, it, it's just so much pressure here. The opponent already had the blue source in hand. I guess them making the construct token makes sense. But I, I think they definitely missed some damage. Alright. Eat, eat 12. Alright. I, I did a fun dance that time, but it wasn't quite good enough. Unseed. That's what game 3 is for. And I think I like how I've boarded. I want to be able to Cunning Wish for both Not of This World and Hercules Recall. I guess there's worlds where I can consider bringing in something like Chain of Vapor. It's just a little awkward. Alright. Um, this is really awkward. 
because I have a turn one chalice on zero, but my follow-up play is Profane Tutor, which is a zero drop, as we know. So I think I have to mulligan this hand. I don't think this one quite works out, despite having very good cards for the matchup. This one has the same problem. Uh, this one also has a double Urborg problem, though. Uh, I'm going to go deeper here. Uh, turn one. Needle, either Ottawara or Spellbomb. Play Opal, Lotus Petal. Turn two, Dark Depths copy. That's a hell of a five-card hand. Absolutely. Opal. I'm going to assume that they just stepped away from their computer or something. Not that they're thinking this hard about whether or not to Force of Will and Mox Opal. I've been wrong before, though. It would be very annoying for me if they pitched, if they killed this Mox Opal, but, like, I don't think that makes any sense. Okay, cool. Needle. There's two Ottawaras in the deck. There's one Spell Bomb. The Ottawara is much harder to use, though. I'm going to go ahead and name the Aether Spell Bomb. And we'll call it a turn. That's an Urza Saga. If, if that's their start, I don't know that they're going to be fast enough at doing what they're doing. Yeah, there's a pedal. Uh, there's an Emery, which can recycle the pedal next turn. And Emery does notably give a... Excuse me, does notably give a cost discount on the Ottawara activation. An opponent's now sitting here trying to figure out whether or not they need to or should crack the bobble. Okay. No is the answer. No is the answer. Espion stage. Target Dark Depths. I will then F6 your turn. And whatever happens, happens. Keep the one with no counters. Get my nice tentacle boy. If opponent doesn't currently have an answer, they need to crack that bobble to fish. Okay, that's Emery, I assume, on Lotus Petal. It is on Lotus Petal. Alright. What do you got? Alright, Thought, Thought Monitor buys a turn. Okay. Play land. Crash in. Opponent jump blocks. They can reduce the cost of Thopter Monitor by three. Meaning it still costs a little bit too much mana here. Um... They may end up being able to stabilize in terms of replaying Thought, or Mo sorry, Thought Monitor from Graveyard with a Mox Opal, though. Ooh. Oh, no. Yeah. Not great for me here. Oh, oh, they targeted Lotus Petal? Rather than Thought Monitor. Is that an error, or do they have a plan? Okay, it's a Retrofitter Foundry activation. And they can untap that and make a Thopter that can block. Okay. That's Psy. They need to... Uh, I think they just killed themselves. That Servo doesn't fly. Yeah, I, I think I lost this one to a more experienced pilot. Uh, 20 you. Yeah, I, I, I lose that one to a more experienced pilot. But, you know, it's scoreboard. All right, final round here. We're sitting at a positive record. I think I keep this hand. A little weird in terms of sequencing. I think I just play Urza Saga and pass, and then plan on Mox Diamond, discard Peat Bog, Urborg next turn, and go from there. I think that feels fine. I don't think I need to resolve my Mox Diamond immediately. Like, there's specific decks where, or like, I get paired against, like, Trinisphere or something like that, where I really want to resolve it on turn one. But in a lot of other worlds, I want to... Ooh! They're a Stormy Boy? Yalthy Voidwalker. Absolutely. I'm good with that happening. Alright. So this will be Mox Diamond... Discard Pete Bog. I think I'll go ahead and just play Thespian Stage here and call it a turn. Lotus Petal and Douthy Voidwalker don't tend to see a lot of play alongside each other, um, so I'll be kind of interested to see where this goes. We might be playing against a full-on brew. My Urza Construct tokens will probably race what they're doing. Oh, they might be playing, like, a Douthy Voidwalker Depths deck that just... All, yeah, that just also has Lotus Petals. 
All right. Um, let's make some Urza Saga tokens and try to bully my opponent. Uh, yeah, let's uh, continue going that route. And I think I just want a Pithing Needle Elvish Reclaimer here. I think I'm good with that. All right. Pithing Needle, Elvish Reclaimer. I don't want to play Urborg yet. Play Peat Bog here. And I have I have more power on board, and I've kind of cut off an angle for my opponent. Um, I also just have Cunning Wish, or like a Slaughter Pact if I need it, or Cunning Wish for Chain of Vapor. I guess also technically Cunning Wish for Ad Nauseam is like a thing too. I guess I need to watch my Exile Zone. I thought I could sack Dalthy Voidwalker and get an Urza Saga. That's a thing. I don't have blue blue yet to pay for a pact of negation. Okay, opponent has played their own Urborg. I will take the shadow damage. I am at 14. Chalice is cool. Chalice for one makes my cunning wish more awkward. I don't I don't think I play my chalice here. Leaving up the Thespian stage also just like very nice for a couple of like niche interactions that can happen involving, like, my opponent casting a crop rotation or something. So let's call it a turn. Wasteland my Thespian stage. I will flow to mana. And when I get priority back, I will Cunning Wish. My deck must look just absolutely wild from the other side of the table. Get Chain of Vapor. Hmm. Yeah, I'll take that Shadow Damage. Doing fine in terms of life total management here. Because of my pact, I don't think I'm supposed to pay play Chalice. Drawing another Urbor here. Not the best. Crash in with both. Right, there's the chump block from my opponent. That's fine. I can just two mana Vampire Hex Mage. And then I still have Chain of Vapor up. I can also like do the Urborg tapping thing here. And oh, I'm in combat damage. Anyway, I can do the Urborg tapping thing and not actually, excuse me, uh, remove a depletion counter here. I shouldn't need this other land. I'm going to play it out anyway. Don't want to get got by some stupid thing that makes me like a, a mana tithe tax or something. Okay, that's good enough to get the concession. Alright, we are playing against a, another Depths deck. Cunning Wish for Chain of Vapor is sick. Pithing Needles are sick. I want another Pithing Needle in here. Probably over a Pact of Negation. Water Pack's not bad. EE's playable. But very weird. Um, Probably get away with cutting the LED and playing Slaughter Pact. Like, Slaughter Pact is nice if I just need to get an Elvish Reclaimer out of the way. I think this hand is a little bit too slow for me to actually care about it in this matchup. Like, there are fine tools here. I think I can go faster. Turn 1 fast okay with you? I think turn 1 fast is okay with me. I think I just junk the Ad Nauseum here. Yup. Yes, please don't discard spell me. Fuck! That's unfortunate. We had the turn one there. Oh, that is a fucking bold choice. To take the Mox Diamond over the Vampire Hex Mage. Yeah, uh... I will just produce Vampire Hex Mage anyway. That was absolutely a misplay in my opinion. Um, I'm going to play out the Hex Mage to play the Hex Mage. Oh, fuck. They played, they played Urborg. God damn it. I could have just Dark Depths and then just made the Merit Lodge on turn one. I didn't realize they played Urborg. It was shiny. You can't fault me for that. No court would convict me. So now, if opponent has a Wasteland, I get punished for that. Yeah, they have their own Hex Mage. Alright, um... We might stare at each other for a little while. Yeah, I've... Well, we would have stared at each other anyway. I would just already have the Merit Lodge active. Okay, so I will make my own Merit Lodge here. 
and then we will play the game of like who beats the other person's merit lodge first if they have like sejiri step and such they're probably favored i i can long term work towards a cunning wish line i don't have like a caracas here uh sure that's fine but what are you doing this is indestructible. You just lost the game for doing that. Yeah, so uh, for context, this, like right now when I am recording this, there are all access tokens on Magic Online. So a lot of people are getting into the format for the first time, which I'm super a fan of. Uh, but as you can see here, especially playing in the tournament practice room, a lot of the players are rough around the edges. So I think that was a four and one with this. Uh, I, I don't have the little like counter and treasure chest, so let me know exactly what the record was. But I think that was a four and one. But like asterisk by that, that many of the players that I was playing against were like newer and missed onboard things that I pointed out that would have been very bad for me. So I don't necessarily think I should have had that exact record. Overall thoughts on the deck list surprisingly good i think there's room for tweaking this and improving this still i think getting an expedition map into this deck list is totally reasonable and actively good that's something that i'd like to squeeze in the other thing is like should this deck even be fucking around with the ad nauseum lightning storm kill given how good it is just in other areas like this deck was really good at being an urza saga deck and this deck was really good at being a Dark Depths Merit Lodge deck. Like, there might be something here where you just, like, trim LED ad nauseum and some number of packs of negation and just, like, replace these with more redundancy for the Merit Lodge combo. Like, I like a lot of what's going on here, and, like, Seeing how this league played out makes me wonder why more people aren't trying to, like, Merit Lodge Urza Saga like this, because it felt good. Having access to, like, the Cunning Wish package, um, especially not of this world, was really cool. Um, I, I will say, though, again, like, caveat on all the results here, these were played in the tournament practice room. But I think with some tweaking, like, this, this is ready for leagues. Like, this was a lot of fun to play, and I really enjoyed this. Like, truly. Sean, again, thank you for donating. Like, this was an awesome idea. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on your way out. If you made it this far and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to support my channel. If you want to mess around with this or you want to get one of your own decks on the channel, that information is available in the video description. Have a great rest of the day. See ya!